Hi everyone, it's Diane here. Welcome to my studio. I bet you don't know what this is. Well, you probably do. This fell out of a tree here the other day. It's bird's nest. Can you see that? The inside of this bird's nest is lined with hair. This is dog hair from one of our dogs. Isn't that amazing? Most beautiful creation you ever saw. I just can't even begin to imagine how birds make these things. I think it's a chaffinch's nest. One fell out of the same tree last year as well and you can't help but feel tragic and sad for the poor little birds who spent so long constructing this wonderful thing and it's no good putting them back because they still abandon them if you do. It's such a shame, isn't it? We've had such a lot of wind here um, and um, all sorts of terrible things are happening in nature. But this is soft and cosy and can you believe how small that is and how tiny the nestlings must be when they hatch from their eggs? And just raising a family in a space this small, can you imagine? Incredible, isn't it? It's been sitting on my desk for a few days and I'm trying to think whether I can possibly do it justice and paint it, and I don't know that I can. So what do you think? Should I have a go at painting this? I think I'm going to put it aside for now and think about that another time. But instead, we will do some paintings of some birds today. Let's get rid of the debris. And um, without... Uh, any further ado, I'm going to draw some um, branches coming into the paper. Yeah, I'm going to just do with my uh, whoops, um, my Stettler pigment liner. This is a point two. I'm going to just sketch in some branch-like things, and then I'm going to stand some birds on here. I'm going to make them up, they're not going to look like any particular birds and uh, I'm just going to enjoy doodling for a bit. So I'll play some nice music and I will speak occasionally when I've got something to say. And. Uh, <clears throat> We have some leaves coming down from the top here. Somebody said a while ago that it was a good idea to practice, if you wanted to loosen up, that you should practice drawing with your other hand. I'm very predominantly right-handed and I have a feeling I would get very frustrated with that. I'd, I'd do that if I had to. Um, and God, I hope. I don't ever have to, but... There's something very satisfying about drawing leaves, isn't there? Kind of just fun. And we can also have some little flowers popping out here too. There's a, a great trend at the moment for um, painting in a simple, I don't know if they still call it naive, but that's what I was taught to call it, a sort of almost childlike style. So relaxed and easygoing and that's nice really, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to put a little birdie up here. He's going to hopefully look like a bird and not an egg. It's a commitment, isn't it? And give him some eyes.
to make him into a robin. Give him some colour in a minute and he'll look more like a bird. And we'll have another one over here, shall we? Some flowers here. If you're going to be drawing in pen, pen and ink like this, you probably want a fairly smooth paper. This is a hot press, I think, or not shiny, shiny, but kind of um, reasonably, reasonably smooth. And let's have another branch coming in over here. You want to try and make the birds look as cute as you can. If you possibly can. Vary the sizes of the flowers. That's going to be a flower rather than a, a leaf. And uh, let's have a butterfly down here. And maybe a smaller one over here. Maybe a little bee here. Just 
and so on and so forth, etc. etc. And you can just keep going. Okay, having having done that, we can now colour it in. Start with uh, olive green and quinacridone gold. So, if you want to have kind of consistency in your painting, you probably want to use at least some of the same colours throughout. So you can use the green stronger uh, or weaker and then you can just drop another colour beside it. So I've started off with quinacridone gold added to the um, olive green but now and now I'm going to add some blue to those ones, maybe that one, and then these ones down here I'm going to do with blue as well. So that way it gives harmony but variety as well. So the leaves haven't got any more. I might want to put a couple over here, a couple more here, which don't have um, ink around them at the moment. Um, maybe a couple down here. And then, yeah, a couple of blue ones amongst the yellow. And then we're going to add some quinacridone to the blue-green to give us a brownish kind of colour and we come in and start at the top. the branches. doesn't matter if it touches the colour of the um, leaves because if it runs it doesn't really matter. It's quite nice if it does. Shall we do potter's paint for the roses with flowers? The reason I like to use that colour is because it granulates. I don't know um, if any of you know the name of the artist Hazel Soane. I was just watching something from her where she's talking about not painting the detail but to let the brush do the work when you're painting flowers or whatever you're painting. And uh, I completely agree with that. It's quite important not to not to try to paint the petals because you never will. You never will, will you? At the end of the day. Okay, so now the birds, I'm not going to make the birds completely unrealistic. We're going to go for um, pinkish kind of tone, pinkish brown tone. So we'll use the cobble, sorry, the uh, potter's pink mixed with quinacridone to give us a sort of brownish kind of colour. And then we'll give him a yellow, it's an invented bird, give him a yellow 
guess maybe it's kind of canary. And a little pink tail. And this one we're going to pretend it's a, a robin y kind of bird. Maybe a red breast kind of thing. And the black. There we are. Get that blend. And still using our quinacridone, we'll give this one a nice yellow back. And then some green. A little bit unhappy about this one. He looks a bit sad. I think he needs a brighter colour. When he's dry, I will alter his face so he doesn't look quite so tragic. It's a bit like an Easter egg. Not sure about this painting them facing forwards. This one is going to be green. I'm going to pretend that they're tropical birds. Butterflies. Mm. Pink and blue. Blue. Did I put any more in? Oh, I really think we should have one more butterfly. can be a uh, bluey green colour. The colours of watercolour paints these days are so beautiful, just in their own right. It's amazing, really. You don't have to try particularly hard, do you? Um, flowers. A few more leaves. dry. So there we are, one pretty little picture there with four birds, three bees, two bees, I don't know, two bees, yes, two bee or not to be, one, two, three, four butterflies and some little flowers in pink. You can obviously go further with that if you want, but I think it makes pretty little design 
ideal for a quick doodle when you just want to warm up before you do your proper painting session for the day. Don't forget, half an hour a day will get you on the road to success in no time at all. So I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow and uh, give me a like, subscribe and turn on notifications if you don't mind, that would be wonderful. And uh, don't forget to go to our website too, dianeanton.com and join Learn to Paint Watercolour on Facebook. So I'll say bye-bye for now and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.